Hello everybody, my name is Alex and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to put multiple UVWs onto one single object. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is have three textures all with the correct resolution to be able to be imported into UDK. For, the, for this instance I'm using UDK as the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, my textures. I'll pick this one, we'll have this metal checkered one, and we will have, let's say, this metal scratchy one. Okay, so we're going to open them up, and we're going to make sure they are 512 in this case, because the textures aren't going to be big in the first place, so let's make sure they're 512. See now th this one's a bigger image, but I'm, I'm gonna say that it's 512. This isn't so much needed f when you're doing it in 3ds Max, but if you do intend to put it into an engine, the textures do need to be to a power of two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save these to my desktop in Targa. Go back to one. Gonna do this with all of all three of them, or depending on how many how many you have. Oh, hang on. That's uh, that didn't save it. See. Test. That one did. So you you could have you know ten textures if if that's what you wanted to have. Um, but in this case, the texture would be more of ten UVs. And I'll explain to you how it works in a second, one sec. Put this on the desktop, like so. And there we are. So now we've got the textures sorted. We're going to go into 3ds Max. Now, for the purpose of this, I've just got a, a blank screen. I'm just going to make a box. Doesn't really matter what about the size. So, I've got a box. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into an interval poly. And just because we want three textures but we want it to be the same object, so for this instance, I'm just going to uh, extrude it. Let's see for an example. And extrude it again. So basically, we have three boxes, but it's one object, but they're three. It's one long box. Okay, so now we want to put three different textures on this one object but we want to be able to map them all separately. So you can have, in my opinion, I think it will be the highest quality textures you can get on there. So, first thing you want to do is go into your material editor. And once in here, you can pick any blank one. Uh, I'm not sure what your object is, but you might have uh, numerous. And we'll click on standard. And we'll click on multi slash sub object. Discard this material. And this is how many materials you want to have within this one material, if it makes sense. So if you click on set number, you're allowed to type in how many you want. So in this case, we're only doing three. So we'll do pick three. Uh, I'm sorry if you hear any background noise, it's probably my dog. Um, so okay, now what we've got to do is these three slots, quite rightly, uh, will be the three textures. So you're going to click on none. And then you're going to click standard. And then it'll take you back to what you'd normally see right here. Because these are all standard. We changed it from standard originally. But it's really a multi slash sub object. So we're going to click on standard. And then we're going to basically put the texture in, which will be a bitmap on the desktop. Texture one, open. Make sure we show it in the viewport. And we're going to go back to the sub multi slash sub object. And do the same thing for the other two. You can click this. Some people go into maps. Oh, hang on. Some people go in down here to maps and they click diffuse, but it's it's the same thing as clicking the diffuse as it is 
look in this little uh, box next to where it actually says diffuse it, it does the same thing so brick bitmap and number three check the viewport show this one there we go so now we've got basically one texture or how do you say one one material with three textures on it and what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the IDs so we're just going to I'm, I'm going to assume you have a grasp of how to move around so I'm just going to tell you how it's done not show you the basics so what we're going to do is we're going to find where it says uh, the IDs polygon material IDs and this one's one which means it will be linked to texture one so that's fine that can stay there this on the other hand we're going to set ID to 2 this one we're going to set the ID to 3 like so and then when we put this material on you'll see that each of the boxes have the material that's been assigned to it now you can also see with the texture stretching and such it's not been UV'd so they're all they're all over the place. Now the simple way I have found of doing this after messing about a bit is you, you can just come here and select the boxes with these. Well let's just say select number one. We can go for an unwrap. We can then go and unwrap it. I'm just gonna use flat unwrapping. So it's unmapped, every all the tape the textures are straightened out there's no blur or anything like that we can go ahead and press the X and then we can uh, what, well what happens is now you can easily select these and do the same unwrap but it does mess up where like that unwrap won't stick and it will do what you've done with the other one and it, it, it basically doesn't work it gets a bit, of a, bit of a bit of a mess so we're just gonna actually collapse all right click collapse all just press yes and you can see that the UV is actually stuck. So we're just going to go in into polygon selection, down to IDs again. Mine's right at the bottom. We're going to select number two. We're going to unwrap it, open it. I might want to uh, select all the polygons. We're going to flatten it again see that it's straightened out this one's kind of you know it, it's this one's kind of already done but for if we're just gonna we're just gonna go off instances if that wasn't the texture and you did need to unwrap it for any reason we're gonna do that as well just uh, find it find it that's number three it again and then UV polygon that's been flattened okay so and then you can you can keep that one there if you want or you can collapse it and just let it rest now if you wanted if you made a mistake and you wanted to re-edit these you can literally go into polygon um, straight to the bottom and select whatever group it is you like and once you go to unwrap again, it will have saved whatever you've done previously. As you can see, it's saved how hard they've laid out, which is absolutely awesome. So we'll collapse it again. Now we've got three materials on one object, and all of them have been UV'd. So that already, for people who don't necessarily want to put it into an engine, is pretty good. But if you do want to put it into an engine, uh, what I'm going to show you is UDK at the minute then this is what you would do. We're just going to select it, we're going to go to export, export selected, uh, I normally go ASC2 scene export, I've got my desktop just for the convenience, so I've got a test box, sure, save it. Um, these are the settings that I normally have, there are many different variations that do many different things. Um, but as long as you have uh, things like geometry, shapes, uh, materials, 
if you as long as you have these kind of things selected, then it, sh it should be fine. So, okay, now we're kind of done with that. We've got the test box right here on the desktop, so we'll click textures, which is good. And we're going to open UDK. I've opened all these up prior to this because it does take a while sometimes. So, the last steps now, we're just going to go to import. Now, the box won't be to scale because I can just scale it up, but that's not too much of a problem because we can just scale it in the engine. We're going to go to the desktop, click the box, click open, and just call it test because I'm going to delete it after. I, I don't want that clogging up everything. So I've got I've got my box right here, and I can put that in. And as you can see, it is quite small, so I'm just gonna use scaling mode. Okay, got a big box now. That's great. Now to put the textures on that you've seen before, with with UDK, it's the same. Uh, pretty, pretty much everything is the same because UDK just doesn't like to make it easy for you. But we're just going to import these, all three of these, these textures. Then we have to create a new material. We're going to call it Texture 1. Oh, I bet it needs a. Put it in the text package. Okay. Ah. Well. It's just saying that 1 is already called that. So okay we've got a texture. Now we just basically drag texture one into it. We're gonna hook it up to the diffuse and we're gonna click yes. A little big tick to say it's in the corner. Then we're basically just gonna do the same thing. But with the rest of them. Texture two, we'll click it over, hook it up, tick. I mean, obviously, you'd apply a lot of other effects to these if, if you like your actual textures, such as specular maps, um, ambient occlusion, bump maps, or in this case, normal maps. Um, and then we're just going to create the last one. Now you see there was no errors because all the textures are to the top of the screen. Now that you have your, your textures for these set up, so we're going to double click on the the mesh we brought in, and the first thing you might see, I don't know if it'll be collapsed or not, uh, it depends uh, how how it was, I'm not sure it can be collapsed or it's not, but if it isn't, you want to find LOD information, it's level of detail, you want to expand basically everything, you'll see that there are one, two, three slots. Well, it counts one as zero, and you know you get the gist. Um, this basically is the three materials that we put on in the first place. It's given us options to put slots. Now you have you have to turn them into material textures into materials before it lets you put them in. So we're going to select the material one, and we're going to click the green arrow. So it goes material one, and then material two. Where are you? There we go. Texture two. Put it in two. And texture three is number three. And press X, bam, and then we're gonna just jump in game. I don't know how well Camtasia picks this up, but there is our box that has remained with all the UV that we put on it. It's one object with multiple textures. It can be anything you like. You could create a car which has multiple UVs on it if you wanted to. I'm not sure of the downsides of this yet because I've actually only quite recently worked this out myself. Uh, I couldn't find any videos on it, so I, I thought I'd make one uh, to help anybody who wanted to know. Obviously, you'd align this properly if, if it was you know, meant to be there and such. But apart from that, if you've got any problems, I guess ask me in the comments. I might not definitely be able to answer, but uh, I'll definitely give it a go. But apart from that, thanks for watching.